What's up gang, Jose here, Wire Ninjas. Today's install day, yet another install. So we got a cool one for you today actually. Today we're gonna be doing some LED strip lighting and we're gonna show you how to install it start to finish. And that's about it, <laughs> that covers it. So let's take a look at what we're doing. All right guys, so we're gonna be doing strip lighting in this space right here. The homeowner wanted some type of lighting, some type of ambient, something to give the room some pop or flare. Uh, he didn't want to go crazy budget wise, so we came up with a solution that fits everyone's needs. We decided to go with an uh, LED strip kit off Amazon. This thing, I got it for 50 bucks. It has all the features I want and need. He wanted RGB. We needed a certain distance or length of this cable. And then we also wanted a little, uh, you know, app control as well as music mode to tie into the music system. We're doing Sonos products. Um, so it'll visualize based on the music, but also he has a remote control for it. Now, let's get into the actual build. So, for this particular space, what we're going to do is, you see that little molding up there? We're going to pull that molding and we're going to drop the molding about half an inch to an inch to accommodate these lighting strips. So the lighting strips can be buried in that new recessed portion we're going to create, underneath or between the ceiling and the molding, the new height of the molding. So the light will just emit out of there. It'll be a nice clean line of light. It'll give us a really nice look and feel to the room. So we're going to hit that side. We're probably going to traverse or pull that molding too, go behind that. And then we're going to hit this portion as well. Now we're sticking just to this little back area. Like I said, we're not doing the whole room. We could do the whole room, remolding everything, but that takes the budget way up. It's a lot more lighting to cover. In case you guys are wondering too, um, this stuff, I've worked with it a few times. It's good, but it's not great. The thing is, to get really professional quality strip lighting, I mean, the quote for this room alone was probably around 2K, I think, when I uh, looked up the parts and stuff we need. Lights in their professional form are very expensive. However, they do give you the cleanest, best aesthetics possible. There's no gap in the light. You know, it doesn't look like individual light bulbs going by. The light is clean, there's no gaps, it's really sleek, really cutting, you know, cuts through the, the, the room really nicely. Also the colors and the color spectrum is much better. So this is gonna be an interesting install. We're gonna start by uh, pulling the molding. I'll show you guys how to get into that. We're gonna, all right, so basically, first thing we have to do is to cut the paint because the paint is attached to the molding. This has been painted one or probably more times than that. So I have to take a utility knife and actually slice along the entire molding, top and bottom. Also the corners too. We want to slice at the top edge, we want to slice at the bottom edge continuously through the entire molding we're pulling so that we don't rip the paint off the wall when we pull this molding down. So that's step one. I'm going to grab my tools and we'll get into, we'll get this started. So check it out guys. What I've done is I've I left the knife in the wall for you guys. And you see the cutting, I started here, I'm gonna cut a slice all the way across cause you see how the paint and this molding have merged or the molding and the ceiling have merged due to the paint. We wanna make a clean slice cut down all the edges. So that means the corner, the bottom, the top, and then this edge on the inside wall too. This is so when we go and, and pull the molding off, we don't rip out the paint. So I'll try to continue the slice here with the camera in hand. You're gonna just pull just like this. And not to worry if you slice a little bit of the paint off or anything like that. This all gets corrected later with some painter's caulk. So, you see that? Now I can slice clean through the molding itself. Really nice. Uh, this is... We'll hit the top for a fresh cut here. See, that's actually what I'm cutting on top. If you notice, it's just a little painter's caulk that's sealing up. And then a layer of paint over that. So we're going to get this cut out. Make sure to get some nice deep cuts. Try to work the inside. You see how the knife got in there on the inside real nice. If you have to saw, give a little sawing method. Let's do that. Whatever you gotta do to get this molding cut out. Like I said, don't worry about a little damage right next to the corner itself because that'll be taken care of with the painter's caulk. So check it out, people. See how I can actually gap the thing now? Now we're not dealing with the actual paint and adhesion that the paint causes with this. We're only dealing with whatever hardware is used to shoot this into the, into the wall. So I think the last cut we have to make is right here. So we're going to go ahead and slice that up. 
Bear with me, I'm working one-handed so I can give you guys a good shot of this. Okay. Okay. Let's cut that out. Let's make sure that corner meets for the cut. Okay, so I'm gonna continue this process the whole way down. See that, that's the actual caulk coming out right there. Once we pull this molding down, another step would be to actually clear this caulk out of there. So we're gonna take a, a, a scraper and scrape the caulk off so we get nice clean results afterwards. But once you make your cuts, slice all down. So we'll give it a long cut here now. Jeez. It's hard doing everything one-handed, people. Like a nice long cut. All right, guys, so I've managed to slice out this entire side. So I'm gonna show you guys how to pull these moldings. As you can see, I've stuffed a flathead screwdriver into this one side. The reason I did that is to clear some gap, makes a little gap, you see that nice little gap we have? To come and use a proper, uh, proper prying tool, which I'm gonna use this little super bar made by Vaughn, made in the USA. If I can find tools made in the USA, I generally like to use them. There goes our screwdriver. Look at this, with the proper prying tool, this molding's coming right down. You wanna pry lightly and get a feel for where the actual screws are. So I'm feeling out with the pry bar where the screws are and I have it pretty pried out. And because I'm doing this one hand, I'm gonna take the liberty to finish it by hand. So, look at that. They didn't even use an air uh, tool. They shot straight up nails in here, which is not a problem, just means they were on a budget. Um, the air tools make things so much easier, people. <laughs> <laughs> so that's it. This is what's going to be behind the molding. Usually there's a lot more pins with an air tool, a brad nailer, but this is not a big deal and this is actually a little bit easier to deal with on some levels. So we'll get the rest of this pried out and then we'll get into the next steps. Um, one of the next steps is to get these nails out of the way. So when we go and put the molding back, we, we need to uh, clear these out of the space because we're going to shoot some new brad nails through the uh, molding. So the way we do that is, you can see I have this hole on the ladder. I'm going to put my molding through the hole and I'm just going to tap. See I tapped the nail, I backed it right out of there. There's the open hole, you see that? So we're going to do this side now. You can see the, the nail going through. I'm just going to tap with my hammer. And look at that, it falls right out. So. Like I said, these uh, nails are a little bit easier to deal with than the brad nails. So that's that. Um, another step would be to get this, uh, get this old caulk off the wall. And the way we're going to do that is with some drywall tools. You have to prep the area for when we go and reinstall this molding. So if I can find my drywall tools around here. Yeah, so let's get a spatula. Oh, this is my good one. I don't want to hurt the good one, but... This is my nice one. It's all metal design. It's beautiful. So, to prep this area, I'm going to get a little scrape where the old caulk was so it doesn't get in our way when we're trying to reinstall the molding. And we got to clear it out so then if they do come and paint this place, you know, it's prepped up for them. Maybe hit it with a little spackle if we have to. But yeah, that's the prep work, is getting the nails out. We have to get the nails out. And then we also have to get the caulk off of this uh, surface as well. So let's get that out of there. We're gonna use this tool. You can use this tool or a knife, but the whole goal is to get this caulk off of the corner piece or off of all the trim moldings. So I'll have the boys work on that. We'll clear this. It's best, I think a utility knife, just running a knife along, just cut it right out would be really nice. So let's finish, uh, we'll pull the rest of these moldings and then I'll show you guys more how to deal with this, clean these up, pull the nails, and clean up and prep the areas. After that's done, um, we can start putting our circuits in the place, but we gotta continue clearing this wire path. All right guys, so uh, take a look. You can see all the molding is gone. Now the last piece we pulled is right here over the window. It's a flat molding, a little bit different style and design. Sorry about that. 
So with all the molding now removed, we can proceed in some form or fashion. I recommend that you, after you pull the initial molding, you get all the nails out. There was all nails, I pulled all these nails out and I also scuffed and removed the, the existing caulk that was stuck to the walls. So I recommend that as a next step. You pull your moldings and then you get all these nails out. This is the last one I have to do. So I'm gonna pull these nails out, but I'm also gonna remove this edge of caulking so you can give it a fresh coat of caulk after. You see this? I'm gonna slide a, a knife down here and kill this, this caulk edge. Same thing on the wall, so anywhere there's caulk on the wall stuck to it, let's pull that so we can give it a fresh shot because caulk doesn't like to stick to old caulk. It's all best to do it all brand new. So I'm gonna prep this piece and then we'll proceed in deciding how we're gonna get back to our receptacle. So we'll pull the kit open. We'll see how much length we have on each of the circuits. Again, I particularly got this kit for a reason. It, it, it meets the desired length I need, but it also has two tails. So I can send one tail this way, complete this side. The other tail is gonna go this way and complete that side. Once we decide how we're gonna get the circuit in place, where exactly it's gonna sit, we can, we can set that up and then we can take a look at the molding and place it, uh, we're gonna take a sample basically. We're gonna turn on the light, we're gonna place the molding uh, really snug up, until, up to the lights and we're gonna see how the light actually emits if we drop the molding down a bit or raise it up a bit. We want perfect results, so that takes a little bit of trial and error mid process, but it's gonna be well worth it because we're gonna get the best possible results with the stuff we have. Okay guys, so we're ready for the next steps and that would be figuring out how we're gonna get this kit from this area up through the molding and then thread through. So, a couple things. Uh, we can pull this receptacle. Someone get on that, let's pull this receptacle. Let's pull this plate and see what's in there because I'd like to use that receptacle if we're not using it for anything. We can have the little eye there and stuff like that. Um, and then we need to make a hole at the top. Hopefully we can thread the wires through. If we can't, we might have to make a cut in the drywall. Another thing to consider is that it's gonna go behind this molding. So we need to cut, we need to cut into the drywall. We gotta channel that out so that we can make a, a passage for it so that it can go behind that, uh, that flat piece of molding. So I'm gonna channel that out. A couple things, one, we'll check if the stud bay is clear here. So it looks like we have a stud right there. What the F? So why would they put that right there? So we have a stud right here. I'm gonna mark mark that. And then we're gonna go to the right of that stud. Hopefully we can. Yeah, the stud is right on this line, buddies. So I think the best course of action is to cut right directly to the right of that line. Get this in there so I can pull the receptacle through, push the receptacle on. So I'm going to draw my gang. We're going to have a gang cut out right there. Keep it all in the same area. Power's right next to it too. So we're not going to run the vac, so we, just for video purposes. Normally we'd run the vacuum while we cut this gang out. Okay. damage there due to this nonsense that's in the wall. This looks like uh, RG59. It's an old school like camera connector or an antenna or something like that. We're gonna leave a bit of wire in case we need. Give me a cutter somebody. Yeah, I don't have a cutter. We're gonna leave a bit of wire in case we need to reuse the circuit, but otherwise we're gonna cut it out. Cool. All right, so cut that wire, be good. Now we need a hole at the top to bridge these two receptacles, this receptacle to up there, so. I'm gonna get my tape measure and see where we need to fall up there. We're gonna go nine inches right to the center of the stud. So, nine inches, I'm gonna make a mark at the nine inch mark. And I'm gonna to try to cut it as high as I can while still being within the molding, which I'm not sure is possible. You see this? We're gonna hit right into the stud. Yeah, we're gonna hit right into the stud. So let's see how low or how high we can go. We're gonna have to spackle. Why is the wall brick? <laughs> oh, geez. 
So I see something in the way. This could be a beam we're hitting, buddies. Because it shouldn't be anything else. Yep, it's definitely a beam or something. So we're gonna have to channel. So basically we're gonna see how low we can go. Can't go there. Can't go there. Okay, there we go. So we have to see how high the beam rides. The beam starts right there. So let me get a level. A small level is fine. Oh, this is cool. Steve, we got one here. So before I proceed and jack up the wall too much, I'm gonna draw a level line from the cut I want to above the molding so I can cut this out. Steve, get me the oscillating saw, please. Make it the size of the strip so you can hopefully fit in the strip and just spackle right over it. I'm gonna cut the rest out with the saw because we're right on a stud. So that should be about the width that we need. All right, cool. Yeah, so it is a six by six, or it's a structural beam. So with this hole, we can shoot down or shoot up. Let me just carve out the inside of the hole so we have a little bit more to play with on the inside as far as the snake's concerned. Let me get a metal snake, Steve. So, we're gonna drop the snake down from the top. Grab the snake, now we can pull our LED strips up and through the receptacle. So we have our strip lighting here, is it running? Yes. So we have our strip lighting, we're gonna tape it to our snake and pull it through. And we're gonna send it up where we desire it. <laughs> we get the snake off. Steve, so take the snake, I'm gonna pull the tape off. <laughs> so we wanna pull both ends through and then get this, uh, the connector in place at the receptacle. So I'm just on taping. I'm gonna feed myself so they don't get tangled. I think right about there is good. We'll give a little slack just in case on the bottom, you know what I'm saying? So now at this point, we can decide how we want to go up and stick it to the wall. So I think it should go like this. And then we're going to reach out that way. And we're going to go the other way. We have to cut this channel next because we need to be able to be inside. So before we stick it, we have to go inside. Hmm. So let's cut that channel out. Um, well, let me get a, a level line first and then I'll cut it out and we'll be ready for that. So I could bring it around the room, see how she fits on there. I want to do the long side first. And then we'll ask, because we can even hit it up there, we just don't have a molding to cover it. Um, so anytime we're cutting, or, yeah, anytime we're cutting, we want a nice level line where we're cutting. This one's gonna be tough because there's not much room up here, not much head clearance. It's level, honestly. Oh, Whose level this is? It's the owners. It's so rough. <laughs> hey, 
<laughs> this is not real. <laughs> Holy crap. You want a different one? Nah, it's cool. It's cool. Make it work. Yeah, so we need to get the strip all the way to this side of the room. So we're going to have to cut along the way. So let me cut. Give me the oscillating. Where'd it go? Right behind the TV. Made a little channel for ourselves to traverse behind the molding. So, pan out the room, take a look at what we've done. So, we've got our strip lighting up until the point where we want it. Uh, you cut the strip lighting here and show this, Joe. So, for strip lighting, there's going to be several marks all along the way, see? Between every three lights, there's a cut strip. So, you can cut right on that line and you won't have any troubles. So, you basically can get the length that you need. So right now she's in party mode. That's just, I guess, how it is by default. I'm going to pull the battery and just go with change the mode to solid. So now we can take a look at what we've done, really. So start up here, Jeff. So the strip runs there. We lose an inch because we have to cut it at certain places. That's okay. Not the biggest deal. Uh, we lose almost an inch. There'd be one more light. We lost one bulb there, which is fine. You can't have perfection with this style of lighting. Unless you really spend some serious money to do so. Um, so, we have a nice strip there. We continue here. Remember, inside this window, there's going to be a molding covering this completely. We cut a track. We cut the track so we can get it behind this molding. So then it continues there. The other strip's going to run only to that point. So, we've got our strip in place. Now, I think the best thing we can do is, Steve, let's kill the lights in here. And let's take a look at this stuff. Let's see how it looks with the molding in place. So now with the molding, we can test to see, based on how much drop we have, you can see, we either have no light, some light. So that's gonna be really cool, dude, from down here. That looks sick. Take a step back. You see how the light just comes through the molding? We'll do a little bit higher. I think we're gonna go right around there. That's what it's gonna be like. The problem is this wall's bowed so much that I have to tack the molding to the wall to see it's not stacked on straight. Mm -hmm. But that's going to be the general, generally what we're dealing with. So at this point we can find the exact right height that we want, that we desire, and then we can get the molding pinned back up. We're going to finish out that side, determine our height for the molding, and then get the molding pinned up. So you have to make a break in the adhesive backing strip. So you can see the adhesive has a little strip, so a little 3M tape so that it doesn't just stick to everything or itself. We have to peel this tape off a bit. It's hard to get just the tape and not the adhesive. There we go. And then you're going to have to make a slice so that you can start the adhesive tape. Let's see if we can get this like right there, it'd be cool. We're gonna go over it with this one. 
So we'll start sticking it to itself in there. The beauty of this strip lighting is that it's, it's very cheap, it's flexible, it's easy to work with in that capacity. So I'm gonna leave it so that one LED starts right there so we don't really have a gap in the light too much. And then I'm gonna ride right up into the ceiling. So we know we have a clean light line, you know, a clean continuous line of light. Actually hard to do without any ambient light in the room. <laughs> you're getting blinded while you're trying to see behind the stuff. So we'll go ahead and stick that on, move my ladder. So we can end it there. Yeah, we're gonna have to end it there. Cause that's where the LED, oh, sorry. <laughs> I thought I knocked a drill over or something. So let's cut it right here. That way we don't have too much gap. You see the voltage changed? <laughs> well, because we shorted it for a second there. I was going to ask why. Yeah, we shorted it for a second there because of uh, what we're doing. So as opposed to having like two inches of no light right at the end, I'm going to cut it and fold it over right there so we have nice finishing little LED right at the end. Cool. So now the molding is ready to test and go back up. We'll find the height we like, a working height, and then we can put the moldings back up. Final piece, this would be a little bit of drywall repair right there, that strip. But honestly, we did this with virtually no damage. To get light from that point all the way up the wall and across and around the ceiling, virtually no damage. These moldings are going back up. Um, this will be a little bit of damage that we're going to spackle over. And then right here we have a gang. We have to repair this little hole because whoever came in here didn't use a gang. They just shot it through and they did it right on a stud so I couldn't cut a gang right there. Just nonsense, to be honest. So let's find the right hold, uh, height for the molding, and then we'll start tacking that back up. All right, Jeff. So check it out, guys. We're about halfway through. We're about halfway through. We have this side up, and we have this molding completed. Remember, we buried half the strip under there. This is the unfinished side. So what I did was I ran a tape measure for this side, and I, we, we, we played around with the height a little bit. Too much was too much, and then too little was too little, so we settled on half an inch gap of the wall so we have a nice light emission. We'll show you what it looks like with the light off. So that's what it looks like with the light off. Take a step back, Jeff, go wide shot here. Yeah. That's what it looks like with the light off. Really cool, just clean lines of light cutting through. Really nice little ambient effect there. So we're going to go ahead and get this piece back on. And then we'll get into the caulking side of things. After the caulk's done, it'll be ready for the painters to come in and finish. They're gonna have to do a little sanding and painting to smooth this out, because you see the light traps it up there. So they're gonna need to fix the little the little, uh, little trim along the ceiling and uh, paint over the molding, give it a fresh coat, it'll look real nice. So we'll get this pinned up. It's nothing special. You want a brad nailer, brad nailer makes it easy. Um, we'll get a brad nailer or a tape measure. I'm going to try to do this with one person, which I don't know how much success we're going to have, buddies, because Steve's busy doing other stuff. We'll leave him to it to get this. Yeah, just give me a hand there, Steve. So, on the left side, I guess. So I want about a half inch gap. You can see I'm running my tape on this side. we got a half inch gap. We're going to make sure that that's concurrent throughout. So we have about a half inch there, half inch there. So I know I'm working my half inch gap. I can go pinning this into the, into the wall. Now we're doing this on a budget. Uh, one thing we did learn in this process, it would be nice to use brand new molding. And it would be nice to do some, um, some extra drywall work before, but um, Given the budget and the time frame we have for this one, she's gonna end up uh, just like this, which is fine. But if you do spend a little bit more time, it wouldn't be a bad thing. A little extra time uh, allotted in the budget. This needs to go up just a tick. <laughs> um, the better lights, they look amazing. Like they are, I can't even explain. They're just incredible. And I'd like to use them, but we can't do that everywhere. 
there is budgetary constraints. But then again, not everyone, <laughs> most people aren't willing to spend three grand on 60 feet worth of lighting, you know, because that's about what it runs for that, that crazy nice stuff. So a half inch. As you can see, I'm checking with my tape along the way to make sure I'm sticking with that half inch decided height. And I'm giving it a little extra brad nailing because normally this molding's pinned into the top and side. I know this is wood, so it's going to be nice and strong. But I'm going to hit extra, a couple extra pins to make sure this thing stays up there. And believe it or not, these are pretty strong. They actually hold really well. All right, buddies. So I think the molding is completed. Take a look up there. You can see the light emitting through. Let's kill. Very nice, boys. Let's kill all the lights. There we go. So right now we're in party mode. And you can see we've achieved our goal. We got what we wanted. We have the light emitting through in a nice clean fashion. I'm gonna be honest, I'm very happy. I mean, this really goes to show that you can get what you want and you don't have to go crazy on budget. This is a really nice touch to the room and it only cost us maybe a quarter of a day to do. Although we are very experienced at what we do. And as you can note, the caulk has been replaced. We caulked the whole molding, so it's looking pretty good. And I'm pretty happy with this results. Even though we didn't change the molding, we stuck, you know, we kept the, the original molding. Um, all that really needs to happen here is a little bit of sand and paint. Take a look at our drywall repair. We did that. I laid it on heavy so you can just sand and paint over that. It'll be done. This is where the wiring comes out. Let's hit the lights again. So this is where the wiring comes out. A little bit of wall damage there it needs to be sanded and painted, but we did this in a brush plate so that we could work out this. So the controller's here. We can turn the system off. We can turn it on. We can manipulate the system through this remote. That's particularly why we did the brush plate. The other thing is it plugs right in here next to the outlets. And then you have the IR input for use of the remote control. So what the hell was that? Oh, it was my charger. Let's kill the lights again. Sorry, buddies. All right, so kill the lights again. We have the little remote control. Let's manipulate the modes. You see me with the remote control? That's me using the remote control, changing the light modes. So it's really cool. We added a lot of functionality, a lot of coolness. You know, something special to this room that didn't exist prior. And we didn't go crazy. The LED kit cost me about 50 bucks. Like I said, we reused the moldings. And it looks great. I'm very happy with the end result. The homeowner already saw it. They're really happy as well. And that's it. That completes our LED strip lighting installation. I hope you guys like the content. We're looking forward to bringing you more of this stuff, more in-depth installs, lighting and otherwise. I would love to, for, to work with a budget, you know, much bigger budget and do something really awesome. Do an entire room, you know, do stair uh, walkways, stairways, this kind of stuff. It's very time consuming and costly to do it with the pro grade stuff. But the end result is phenomenal. And I got to say, I mean, this is so cool. <laughs> It really gives it a pop, you know? Somebody's gonna be very, very, uh, how do you say, impressed when they come in and do this. All right, guys, that's gonna be a wrap on our LED strip lighting installation. We really hope you like the install. We try to be thorough and take you guys through the process. You know, we're taking you inside the installs nowadays, so we really hope you appreciate it, as it is very time consuming to do so. And we're very happy to bring this to you guys, this and much, much more. Stay tuned. Thank you, we'll see you next time.